Hello YouTube and thank you for tuning in to another Hanging With Heavy video. Hey today I'm going to show you how to take a welder qualification test. Now understand there are a lot of different tests involved but if you learn how to take the basic test, you learn how to take that test, you can pass just about anyone once you learn how to weld in that process. So Hang With Heavy is I show you how to take and pass a welder qualification test. Now if there's one thing that you want to do before you take a welder qualification test, this is you want to practice a little bit. Spend a little time out in the shop, running a few rods. Get yourself comfortable. Make sure that you can produce the weld deposit that you need to produce for the type of welding that you're going to be doing. Now behind me you see a shielded metal arc welding process in place. You may be taking a gas metal arc or even a tip welding qualification test. Now practice is a good thing for sure, and if you're going to go take your welder qualification test, you want to make sure that your skills are up to task. Now, keep in mind, if you're going down to Joe's Welding Shop, your welder qualification test could be as simple as running a fillet weld. Joe takes a look at it and says, okay, you can work in this shop. However, if you are a professional welder, more than likely you will be tested to a welding procedure specification set up by the American Welding Society. Now when I speak of a welding procedure specification, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This will tell you that you're going to be um, testing with shielded metal arc welding on carbon steel. You're going to be uh, tested in materials 1 8 inch through 1 and a half inch thick with 7018 as welded or in the post welded heat treating condition. Now occasionally after you weld something very thick you have to post weld heat treat it to relieve some stresses. Let's take a look at the actual specification itself. Okay this is the standard welding procedure specification or the WPS for this particular welding test. Now if you are a welder more than likely this is the very first test that you will take um, to get your paperwork to start being able to weld on structural members. I'd like to look, I'd like to think of the welding procedure specification as a lot like um, a cake recipe. If you follow the recipe for the cake, you're going to get a cake every time. However, if you change something in that recipe, you no longer will get that particular cake. Those are called essential variables and in an essential variable, we cannot change in a welding procedure specification. The type of electrode would be a welding variable. If you went from a 6010 to a 7018 electrode, this procedure would not be um, applicable. You would not be able to use it. Now then, think about this. If you put three eggs in a cake, you no longer have the same cake that you have if the recipe calls for four eggs. Think about that. That's the way I like to look at welding procedure specifications. Now when you go to the uh, welding lab, to take your welding procedure specification test to get your welder qualification, you're going to be looking at probably a joint very similar to the one that's on the um, video right now. You'll notice that there is a um, root opening at the bottom, that the bevel is to be 45 degrees. Now that doesn't mean each side gets cut at a 45. That means that each angle on either side gets cut at 22 and a half degrees. That gives you a 45 degree included angle. You're also going to notice that they give you a little bit of what we call a root face or a landing on either side of the bevel. The root face or landing, when I take a test, I like to have that as sharp as possible. So. When I prepare my plates, I make sure that I have a good sharp edge that ties into the backing strip. And you're going to notice that there's a backing strip with this. Now, with this particular welding procedure, you cannot use a ceramic backing strip to hold the material in place. It must be a metallic backing strip. So let's continue on with our welding procedure specification. Okay, so let's you say you go to the uh, welding lab or you go to the weld shop where you're going to take your welding qualification test and you, and you run a plate test like you're looking at here. Now this test is going to be evaluated on a couple different things. Number one, it's going to be evaluated on its appearance. 
and its appearance has to meet those requirements set forth in AWS D1.1. Now then, can you make the appearance requirements tighter? Absolutely. If you're working into a shop that, has doing, that is doing architectural type welding where the welds are part of the art, then yes, the, the welds can definitely uh, be tighter. But you cannot loosen up a standard. Now what's going to happen is that the slash portions here are going to be thrown away and then these two portions here are going to be cut into a strip they're going to be bent 180 degrees one's going to be bent for the root and one's going to be bent for the face depending upon the outcome of those results will determine whether or not you have passed the welder qualification test for shielded metal arc welding 7018 on carbon steel, one eighth inch thick up to one and one half inches. Okay, so what we've done today is we've talked a little bit about your welding procedure qualification. That means that you go out there and you are qualified to weld on, on the particular project using the particular electrode in the particular position on the particular material that you have qualified on. A welder qualification is not a welder certification. A welder certification is extremely job specific. So if you're working at, let's say, the local shipyard and your job all day is to weld incremental welds all over the ship, you are not qualified to go to NASA and weld on a launch pad for a space shuttle. At NASA, you will be given a test to their specifications. They may not follow the AWS welder specifications. They may have their own. And you're going to take a test for them. At that point in time, you will be certified to weld for NASA on that particular project. You leave NASA and go to work on a bridge, doesn't matter. You're still going to have to take another welder certification test to work on that particular bridge. So, a welder qualification test shows the employer that you know how to stick weld in this particular test, that you know how to stick weld with 718 or low hydrogen electrode. Now, that means you can weld with just about any low hydrogen electrode to him. So he'll give you a chance. He'll bring you on board. He'll give you a welding test to make you a certified welder for that company. Now, let's say you show up at this shop and you're going to go, you're there to take a welder qualification test. Can you ask them, um, what, test do you, how, what test am I taking today? And they're going to tell you, let's say, the welder structural test, AWS structural test. You ask them, do you have a welder procedure specification? Uh, the man's probably going to ask you, you don't know how to take this test? Uh, because they expect you to know how to do certain things. And that's why I encourage you to become very familiar with the welding procedure specification for the particular test that you want to take. So, hey, until next time, YouTube, you know what I want you to do. I want you to like, share, subscribe, reach over there, hit that like button. And if you're going to be a welder, a professional welder, not just a rod burner, Make sure that you familiarize yourself with the WPS. So until next time, YouTube, I'll catch you where? Outside.